MMA Fight Corner. This is Heidi Fang and Phil Devine for MMA Fight Corner speaking with Raquel Pennington of Team Tate that's on The Ultimate Fighter Season 18. You can catch that on Fox Sports 1 every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern. And I have to say, if you did not watch the last episode of The Ultimate Fighter, you missed an awesome women's battle between Jessamine Duke and Raquel Pennington. Raquel, of course, you powered back and you made a huge comeback in the fight, come, just managing to do what you did and that you put on a war, an absolute war with Jessamine Duke. What are your thoughts looking back on the fight? After her fight, I remember the next morning just waking up and Jessamine was right outside of my room and I was like, oh my God, are you sore? And she was like, no, I'm good, with her big old black eyes. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me, right? And she just started laughing. She was like, no, I'm pretty sore. And I was like, I can't even move. Everything just hurt. I mean, I was like, wow, we really put in some work and being able to look back on the fight and everything. Uh, when it comes to it, for me, as a fighter anyways, I'll sit there and I can fight a fight, but it's just like I'll never completely remember it. I have flashes of certain points that stand out to me and everything, and all I remember from the fight is me and Justin just duking it out, taking big shots, exchanging them back and forth, and, uh, you know, just really putting on a war. I was really happy with the fact that we got to challenge each other. I didn't expect the fight to stay standing. We expected Justin to try to take it to the ground and for me to keep it standing. And when she wanted to stand and just go to toe to toe, it was, I mean, it was great. It was a great experience. Uh, I got to face different questions that I had as a fighter and just pretty much battle through all the challenges. Um, I kind of, I took an injury to my hand and everything. So that was a really good experience for me being able to, I mean, it might sound crazy actually breaking your hand and having to push through and whatnot, but as far as being an athlete and chasing a dream and seeing the heart that you really have in yourself and just learning who you are as a person, um, as a fighter and athlete, it was just, it was great. It was a great experience. I was really happy with our performance, and I gained a ton of respect for Justin Duke. A lot of people were saying it was the uh, female version of Stefan Bonner and Forrest Griffin. What are your thoughts on that, and what does that mean to you to be compared to that legendary fight that happened on the first season of The Ultimate Fighter? You know, it's like, it's the greatest feeling ever. I mean, it pretty much made me just realize everything as a fighter and really see the performance that I put on, all the talent that us women do have and what we're going out there. And I feel like we just really stood up for women's MMA, and we showed the world that we deserve this opportunity. and that we will bring it. Women fighters, I mean, they bring it to the table every time, and I think that our fight was a little bit more technical than the Griffin Bonner fight, but overall, to be compared and saying that we're the women's version, it's just, it's mind-blowing. It's it's a great feeling. So win or lose coming up next, do you feel like you definitely caught Dana White's attention and that you can possibly fight in that finale that's coming up here? to showcase the athlete I am and whatnot and being able to meet Dana and talk to him and see his opinion after the fight and when he came up to me and we just were able to talk and he was like, you know, like, you have amazing hands. The way you fight is like one of my favorite fight styles and everything. It just kind of really built me as more of a fighter because I have people around me, my teammates, my family, my friends, everybody that's always been there from the get-go and they've always seen me and would tell me these things and it was just kind of like, I took it in, but I never totally accepted it, I guess you can say. And I was just like, oh, you might be saying that because you're my family or you're my friends or I'm the only girl that trains with you. And so, of course, I'm tough as nails. But then to actually see and talk to Dana, who has been around athletes his whole entire time, and this is kind of like, sees all this talent in and out and potential in people. And he's one dude that's just, he's straight up, he'll never lie. And when he sat there and,
50 on the Ultimate Fighter is the animosity between the coaches. And, you know, sometimes it comes out afterwards. Oh, it was just kind of, it was for cameras. It was for play. We, we clearly don't need that question asked for this season. But my question is, is did the animosity between the two coaches, did that make it a little more difficult or maybe uh, add some tension in the house? You know, I think actually uh, that's probably one of the number one questions with it. I mean, it's just when you go into it and you're sitting there, uh, I mean, with me, I went into the Ultimate Fighter and I knew Shayna, I knew of Justin, we were supposed to fight on a previous promotion and everything. So it's just kind of like you get put on teams and you automatically get segregated. Uh, and then you're having to live with these people. And when it came to all this stuff with the coaches, you know, I mean, they sat there, they had their battles, all their drama and whatnot, and it kind of, everybody else, I mean, it just gave us something to kind of talk about and have something different to do. But at the same time, it was just, it was a little overwhelming with everything. I mean, it did, I don't think it really any affected any of us because we all kind of just stood off to the side and watched what was going on and minded our own business. But then other days, I mean, you would get defensive of your coach or different things and kind of stand up for them and whatnot. But as far as the athletes, it didn't take too big of a role on them. It was just kind of more like, okay, these, these coaches are getting a little out of control and everything, but they generally hate each other. And it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I guess you really don't need any more of that mentally going on with, uh, like you said, everything being so overwhelming in the house as it is. Um, were you surprised when you saw like the veterans, you mentioned Shayna, that Shayna and Roxanne and uh, getting into the house, Tara La Rosa, that the veterans of this, of women's MMA were kind of out of the competition so early on? Um, you know, it was surprising, especially with Shayna. I've seen her fight plenty of other times. When it came to Roxy, I didn't know a whole lot about her. I just remember seeing her at tryouts and I was like, who is this chick? She would definitely not look like a fighter when you first see her. And I was just like, what in the world? would take a toll on you and how things would be in the house and whatnot. We've seen it go and shoot for through the stars in the last couple of years with women's mixed martial arts. Where do you see women's MMA in about five years? Um, you know, as it's progressing right now, I mean, you can probably talk to a lot of people. Of course, there's still going to be some people out there that don't, don't agree with women's MMA. They don't agree with women fighting or whatnot, but I mean you talk to anybody else and they'll sit there and say that women bring it, that they're very exciting and they can go to a card full of men and there'll be one woman fight and they look forward to that one girl fight. And I think that with this uh, experience on the Ultimate Fighter and the first season of the women and then the fights that are being brought and everything, I think we're making a great name for ourselves and it's just, it's only up from here. Uh, exactly. Well, thank you very much. And uh, Raquel, we'd just like to thank you so much for coming on the show, and we appreciate your time and wish you all the best of luck going forward in the tournament. Again, The Ultimate Fighter airs every Wednesday, 10 p.m. on Fox Sports 1. Thank you, and thanks for having me. The MMA Fight Corner.